All right, are we live? It looks like we're live. All right, perfect. So hello everybody and welcome to another CVM Reviews. Normally it's CVM's Bruise Reviews, but this week is gonna be a little different as we are under some time constraints due to my traveling to Orlando this weekend for the Open to represent Team Card Hoarder Battling and Modern for Guts and Glory. What we're going to do this time, though, is we're going to review the 15 Kaladesh Mythics. So all 15 Mythics in Kaladesh have been spoiled. We have all of their text, converted mana cost, power and toughness, all their abilities. So we're going to go over the 15 Mythics and see if we can figure out just where they're going to end up in Magic the Gathering. Not just standard, not just modern, limited, although most of the time Mythics are pretty slam dunk bombs in limited. And while we're doing the reviews, we will take questions and comments and interact with the chat. So let's jump right in and see if we can uh, blaze through these. So first up, we have Angel of Invention. Three white white. Mythic, creature angel. Already there, I'm going to stop you. and let you finish. But Archangel Avacyn is still the best angel that's mythic at five mana and standard. But here we have three white white for a 2-1 Flying Vigilance lifelink. And Angel of, In Angel of Invention has Fabricate 2. So what that means is when it enters the battlefield, you can choose to either put two plus one plus one counters on it, or create two one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. And all other creatures you control get plus one plus one. So there's basically two modes on this creature. It's either a 2-1 Flying Vigilance lifelink anthem, or it's a 4-3 Flying Vigilance Lifelink Anthem. And this is all for 5 mana. Uh, and, and as a 2-1, it also gives you 2-2 two, two, two tokens because it also pumps other creatures you control. So I feel like if this card does decide to catch on, it's going to be because of the Anthem effect and the fact that you can it will, it will facilitate going wide with tokens. In these colors, you have... Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, which does give you the Anthem effect already when you use your Minus. You also have Gisela the Broken Blade, which is the same thing. It's just a 4-mana, four 4-3 four, flying lifelink creature. Although Angel of Invention does have Vigilance, pretty relevant. And then you have Archangel Avacyn, which is, is all we know, the 4-4 the four, four flying Vigilance, Flash, 5-mana, Comes into pl enters the battlefield, all your other cr all your creatures get indestructible in until end of turn, blah blah blah, partridge in a pear tree, card does a lot. So I feel like Angel of, of Invention may be a one or maybe a one or a two of in tokens tile decks that want to try and go wide. But once Archangel Avison rotates out of standard, Angel of Invention is going to be a slam dunk. So we have a as, as a 4-3 Flying Vigilance lifelink, the card is great because you also get the Anthem effect on top of it. Now, it might even turn out that this card just ends up seeing play alongside Archangel Avacyn, but I feel like Avacyn having Flash is really going to push it heads and shoulders above this card, but it's one that I'm keeping in the back of my mind, and it, as a pre-order here on Isle of Cards right now, at only four dollars and seventy-five cents, I think Angel Invention is a very good buy, and I might end up getting a set myself. The ceiling on these types of cards are extremely high. Archangel Avacyn sat at twenty-five, thirty dollars in standard for a very long time, and if Angel of Invention does end up picking up, whether it's in this current standard or once Archangel Avacyn rotates, I could see it being twenty or twenty-five dollars. Limited, it's going to be a bomb. I don't think it will see any play outside of standard. Next, we have Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. So this is part of a five-card cycle. They are artifact creature constructs, one for each color, and they all have, a, you know, just a normal vanilla keyword and an awesome secondary ability when they enter the battlefield. So Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is likely going to end up being the best of them. Three white white for a four five vigilance. Being a 4-5 is super relevant. It doesn't die to Collective Defiance. It doesn't die to Grasp of Darkness. And it also isn't going to die. There's a new 4-mana uh, instant deal 4 damage to a creature spell uh, for red. It also doesn't die to Chandra Fire or Chandra Torch of Defiance is minus 3. So Catacly Cataclysmic Gear Hulk having 5 toughness is very, very important. 
but it's a 4-5 Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non-land permanents he or she controls and sacrifices the rest. So this is tragic arrogance, but you don't get to pick for your opponent. Oh, and I get a 4-5, which is an artifact, so I'll choose this as the artifact that I keep, and I'll get to choose another creature, and a planeswalker, etc., etc. So Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is going to be everywhere. It is very good. It is just, this card is awesome. Um, I expect to see have it. I expect it to see a lot of play. It's currently only seven dollars and fifty cents right now in Isle of Cards. That seems like a steal. This this very easily could be a fifteen dollar mythic. You're, we're going to see lots of it all over the standard when it gets printed. Keep an eye out for Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. Now, the downside is that you don't get to pick what your opponents keep. So you know if they have a lot of if they have a better creature than you, then you have to make sure things line up so that you are, you know, they pick their creature and then you can kill it, or uh, it's still beneficial for you to wipe the board. But since you have the card and you know it's coming, you can play around it and you can play to that point. It's also really sweet that all of these gear hooks just work very, very well with Eldrazi Displacer. So keep an eye on Eldrazi Displacer. There's going to be a huge uptick in that card scene play and the new standard, primarily because of these Gear Hulks. Also, just a bomb in limited. All, all, all of the Gear Hulks are going to be insane and limited. First pick all day. All right, here we have Metallurgic Summonings. Three blue blue and enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You can pay three blue blue to exile metallurgic summonings, return all instant and sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand, activate this ability only if you control six or more artifacts. We see here Tezzeret, who is on Kaladesh now, apparently, and is going to be one of the antagonists. This card seems very, I don't want to say unique, but it's just like a powerful card that doesn't really have a home. Like, I don't see, I don't see this card making it big and standard, but I could be very wrong because with Dromoka Command leaving, Dromoka's Command leaving, like, enchantments are just basically going to have indestructible uh, in the new standard. So this one could end up just being very, very good. And really, if you ever untap with this card and you're playing a spell-heavy deck, I mean, you're going to be able to make a lot of tokens at instant speed, um, which is pretty sweet. So, like, this is one of those cards where it's kind of difficult to evaluate it just on paper, or just looking at it, and you'll be able to tell whether or not it's insane or not just from, like, the first game where you play it play it within your, in your deck. Uh, depending on how many instants and sorceries you have in your limited in your limited deck, this card might be very good and draft or sealed. Uh, on average, limited decks are going to have like between four and you know seven instants, you know four and seven non-creature spells. Uh, some of those being artifacts or enchantments. So I don't think that this card is going to be super insane in a limited deck, unless you build build it around this particular card. However, I do see this card seeing a lot of play in Commander. This seems like a perfect Commander card for any any blue deck that has a bunch of spells uh, along with artifacts in it. And at 375, uh, it's definitely worth getting one for your Commander deck if you happen to play a Commander deck with a bunch of spells. In Standard, I feel like this card has a lot of potential, and it's going to take somebody like Sam Black uh, or Josh or Layton to break it. Alright, next up we have the Blue Gear Hulk, Torrential Gear Hulk. Or, uh, oh, I saw, I saw a tweet, somebody's Fat Caster Mage, since so it's a 5-6, so it's 4 Blue Blue, Flash 5-6. When it enters the battlefield, you may cast target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So this card is very, very good. and lets you play any instance from your uh, graveyard for free. I mean, this card just seems great. I I'm, not, I'm not quite sure where exactly it's going to fit in, but there are already a lot of blue and white instants. Um, I mean, you have Spell Queller is still going to be around. There's going to be, you know, you'll have Counter Spells and Bounce Spells. So, like, I could definitely see this in uh, a Control Style deck. 
Uh, I think that if you, if this card does end up making a big splash in standard, it's it's backed by Shaheen Sarani. This is a very Shaheen Sarani card. Uh, Terran Terror, you're right. If you are snapping, snapping. If you are gear hulking back, uh, cryptic. It's this. You're getting the same value as a Snapcaster Mage. Um, so I think that this one might have a little more potential in modern. I don't say a little more potential, but might also have some potential in modern. Um, but this card has it's just a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, you could even play it in like a blue-black control deck, where you can hit like Grassman Darkness and Murder uh, as cards that you can flashback. But just like the, these these gear hooks really remind me of the Titans. They're very Titan-esque, and I feel like. When the Titans were in standard, they were slept on for a little bit, and then just completely took over the format. And uh, now we're just going to see just a bunch of Gear Hulks off the bat because we know that these these are just going to be powerful effects. Finding the, the right way to maximize them is going to be very good. Also, this one doesn't die to Chandra's minus three, which is important. Uh, Torrential gear, gear Hulk is currently only five dollars and seventy-five cents on Isle of Cards. Uh, which seems like a pretty sweet buy. Uh, in fact, the majority of these mythics are all going to be pretty sweet buys. All right, next we have our first planeswalker of the bunch, Dovin Ban. Dovin Ban, B A A N. Is that Ban or Bon? I don't know. We've got Dovin two white blue. Old D B. Old D B. D B Z. <laughs> Uh, he starts with three loyalty counters, plus one until your next turn, up to one target creature gets minus three, minus zero, and its activated abilities can't be activated. That's a real important part. Minus one, you gain two life and draw a card. I mean, some people just want to gain life and draw cards. Minus seven, you get an emblem with your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap steps. So it's kind of cute that, uh, it's kind of cute that a uh, static orb is uh, one of the masterpieces that are in uh, Kaladesh and Dovin Bond's ultimate is Static Orb your opponent, which is kind of cool. I don't think that... So, that ultimate is likely going to win you the game, but it's not as game-winning of an ultimate as I would like to see on a Planeswalker that ends up seeing play as a four of. So what that means is most Planeswalkers that you see that end up in decks as four ofs, their ultimate is just like straight game winning. This one isn't, um, but this is a Planeswalker that you're more than likely just going to be minus oneing as aggressively as possible just to gain life and draw cards. So I think that Dovin will see play. There will be some kind of blue-white control deck that will have Dovin in it, and it's likely going to end up being pretty good. Currently $18.00. I don't know if that is going to be a good price for him because I don't see him as being a four of. Um, but I could be wrong. That minus one, it could just be that where you're just like Dovin minus 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 Dovin minus minus. Like you just you just use it as two life and a card every turn. Because even like if you play it minus gain two life draw card and then they have to attack it to kill it, you're basically gaining at least another two life. And like four mana for four life draw card and a fog seems seems fine. 18 still feels a little overpriced. Dovin's still pretty good, though. Next, we have Demon of Dark Schemes. So three black, 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 flying demon. When Demon of Dark Schemes enters the battlefield, all other creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. Whenever another creature dies, you get an energy counter, and you can spend two colorless and a black and pay four energy to put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control tapped. So it, it, the creatures come back tapped so you can't like use them to block immediately, which I guess is fine. Um, it's also a 5-5 flyer, so it's 6 mana for a 5-5 flyer that just like massacre worms everything, and then you get a bunch of energy and creatures die. This card seems like it has a lot of potential, I mean massacre worms saw some play. Um, I guess it all depends on what the format looks like, right? So we don't have a 4-mana Sweeper anymore. We still have Radiant Flames. There's a new 5-mana Wrath. Um, giving everything minus 2, minus 2, and getting a, just a boatload of energy seems like it could be good. 
but I have a feeling that the decks that this is going to be good against um, are either going to kill you before you can get to six mana, or they're going to have a bunch of always watching in them, and Demon of Dark Schemes isn't really going to kill anything. So uh, I don't think that this card is going to end up be playing a big role in this standard. But I could be wrong, because I mean, six mana, you know, five five flying mythics always have potential to be good. All right, here we have Noxious Gearhulk. I really, really wish that this guy was a 4-5, so that he didn't die to Chandra's minus 3 and Grasp of Darkness and Collective Defiance. But we have a 6-mana 5-4 Menace. And when he enters the battlefield, you may destroy another target creature. If a creature is destroyed this way, you gain life equal to its toughness. I mean, even, even though this guy is only a 5-4, this card is awesome. Just 6 mana, 5 4 menace, kill something, gain some life. Like, this card is very, very good. And it hits another target creature, so if they happen to Emrakul you, like, they can't play Gear Hulk and make it kill itself. Gear Hulk is going to give you, like, outs to killing Emrakul. Like, if you ever get to, like, untap, draw a Gear Hulk and, and play it to kill an Emrakul, like, how nice is that? Like, your 13-13 is dead, I gain 13 life, I have a 5-4. I definitely see Noxious Gearhulk getting a lot of play, and very likely just going to be a 4 of in a lot of decks that actually play it. Uh, the, other, the other spot I see it in is just as a 1 of to find with Traverse the Ovenwald. Um, but man, Noxious Gearhulk is very, very good. It is only 575 right now on pre-order. This is this is another one that I think I might end up getting a set of. I think I just might get a set of all of the uh, the Gear Hulks because I think that they're just all extremely powerful. Man, I just want to kill Amrakul with this guy so bad. The Noxious Gear Hulk is going to die to a lot of Chandra minus threes though. Be ready for that. Speaking of, here we have Chandra Torch of Defiance. I've written about this card, I've tweeted about how awesome I think this card is. Two red red, four loyalty starting, plus one, exile the top card of your library, you may cast that card. If you don't, Chandra Tor Torch of Defiance deals two damage to each opponent, plus one, add red red to your mana pool, minus three, deals four damage to target creature, minus seven, you get an emblem. With whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals 5 damage to target, creature, or player. So here we have a 4 mana Planeswalker, starts with a decent amount of loyalty, can protect itself and still stay alive, generates card advantage, can ramp you, and has an ultimate that wins the game. This card is just insane. People keep talking about how, oh, it's overhyped, it's not as good as people think it is, you know, it... it if $50 isn't a right price tag for it, etc., etc. Money aside, this is pro this is one of the best cards that we've had printed in standard in a, I don't want to say a very long time, but in a long time. And this card is just like insane. Like, this card is going to be so good. The ways to, to fight Chandra are going to be with flash creatures and haste creatures and opposing planeswalkers. So, uh, as we see later on in the review, the new Nissa is going to be very good at fighting Chandra. Uh, Archangel Abyssin is going to be good at fighting Chandra, as well as cards like Reality Smasher um, or uh, you know, haste creatures that can deal enough damage to actually kill Chandra. So, uh, rest easy. It, it's not Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's not. It's not going to. You know, take over the format. It's not going to be band worthy, but you know, much like how uh, Jace set the bar on creatures in the standard that it was legal in, uh, Chandra is going to do the same thing. Like if your if your creature doesn't really do anything and dies very easily to Chandra's minus three, you might want to reevaluate reevaluate that creature being in your deck. Uh, Cab Cabuccino, what do, what deck does she belong in? Anything with red. Like, we're going to see new decks, so there's a, lo a third of the format is leaving, right? So, like, there's going to be just a bunch of new decks. So, like, we're going to see it in Big Red. We'll see it in some Burn decks, because I think Burn is going to be, like, a viable archetype uh, in, the, in the new standard. Like, we're going to see her in Control decks. Like, there are a bunch of sweet Planeswalkers, so you can play her in, like, bigger Planeswalker controlling builds. Uh, like, I, I feel like Chandra is just going to be in a lot of different decks.
be. I think that, I think that Burn might end up seeing play. Uh, as far as her being potentially playable in modern, I also think that's true. Um, not being able to kill a four or five Tarmogoyf sucks, um, but she seems very similar to uh, Chandra Pyromaster, um, so it might be worth trying out instead of her. Granted, this card is insane. $50. I don't see it being much less than forty or fifty dollars, at least for a while. So unless you are okay with you know shelling out two hundred bucks to get a set of this card, I would just try to trade for them aggressively to get them, and then sit on them. Change a torch of defiance, very very good card. Believe the hype. This card is insane. And right, here we have combustible gear hole. So four red red for the it's the red gear hook. So four red red, first strike six six. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If the player doesn't, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then combustible gear hook deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. So that's a lot of words. And what it turns out to be is similar to Browbeat. So <clears throat> majority of the time your opponent's just going to have you mill for three and you're going to get to deal damage. So how to evaluate this card is, you know, is it is it good if it didn't have the draw three cards, right? So like four red red, first strike, six six. If it just had the come into play, mill three, dome them equal to the casting cost, I think that's still playable. Like, you're likely to have more gear hooks in your deck. This is an artifact, so it can help build towards Delirium for Ishkana, Graph Widow, and uh, Emrakul, uh, the Promised End. If you're playing this alongside green or black, then you also have uh, Grapple with the Past and Liliana as a way to, to, to get back cards that you're milling. And so, like, you know, let's say on... Let's say on average, you're going to be dealing like, you know, on average, let's say you get three three damage out of the secondary ability. That still seems fine, considering that you also have a 6-6 six, six first striking creature for only six mana. Plus, there are going to be, you know, times where your opponent can't afford to let you mill yourself, and there's going to be times where you're going to hit Emrakul and just kill your opponent. I think that this guy does seem playable. Now, it's a bomb first pick in limited, of course. I don't think it's playable outside of standard, but I do feel feel like the Gear Hulk, this this particular Gear Hulk, does seem playable. Even when stacked up against how insane the other ones are. Much like Dovin, I also think that the Red Gear Hulk is going to depend on like how it actually plays out. All right, hopefully you guys can't hear that. My my neighbor has Tourette's and is out in his driveway yelling and screaming profanities. So here we have the next Planeswalker, Sahili Rai. Uh, one blue-red starts with three loyalty counters. Plus one, scry one, Sahili Rai deals one damage to each opponent. Minus two, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. Minus seven, search your library for up to three artifacts with different names, put them on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. So, uh, this card is pretty difficult to break down. Uh, I, I did so in... Um, some written content, but let's go ahead and talk it through. So, three mana planeswalkers are, ge are generally uh, very powerful. They are able to come down very early in the game, um, normally before your opponent is going to be able to interact with them uh, favorably or profitably, and uh, they generally don't have insanely powerful effects, but because they're able to come down so early in the game, they, they 
generally impact the game more, more than what you would expect their effect to do so. Sahili is a three mana planeswalker, comes down with three right away. Her plus one, you get to scry one and then it deals one damage to each opponent. So this is not super impactful, but it has a few hidden things to it. Scrying one is very powerful. We learned from the scry lands that it is just very, very good. Uh, very, it very closely comes, it comes close to being worth half a card. So scry one is still very, very good. Dealing one damage to each opponent uh, is a good way to help control opposing planeswalkers. In addition to that, if you are playing in a burn deck with a lot of reach, that one damage can add up. And it can give you time to you know, find your, your more powerful spells because you're scrying and your opponent's having to spend resources and time to attack Sahili instead of you. Incendiary flow equals gone. I mean, she goes to to four right away, so like flow isn't going to kill her and at sorcery speed. I'll get him to turn five if you plus Chandra, yeah, for sure. All right, so now the minus two, you can create a token that's a copy of an artifact or creature you control. It gets haste and then exile. So, um, so the token is exiled. So while we get the benefit of enter the battlefield triggers, we don't get the benefit of dies triggers. So uh, things that trigger when they die, we're not going to be getting any use of, but we will get that enters the battlefield from like the gear hulks. I really was hoping that the red gear hulk cost five and was awesome. Um, but it costs six and isn't as awesome as I expected. Um, the blue gear hulk also costs six uh, and is only going to get us value if we have instants in our graveyard. So I feel like because of Sahili, they kind of toned it down a little bit on the blue and the red gear hulk. Um, there are some unique things that you can do with Sahili, though. For starters, you can copy Hedron Archive, it gives us a lot of mana. Sahili on three. Archive on four, and then on five, you can minus Sahili to copy your archive, and that gives us nine mana on turn five, or we can cash it in to draw three cards, which is pretty sweet. There's also going to be a lot of cool artifacts that are in Kaladesh that we might want to copy with Sahili. In particular, uh, if you were to copy something like um, Chief of the Foundry, which has been reprinted, with your Sahili Rai, you know, that's six damage that you're attacking with your two Chief of the Foundries, but it also is going to give all of your other artifact creatures plus one plus one, in addition to the plus one plus one they had from your initial Chief of the Foundry. So we might end up seeing Sahili in a um, in an artifact aggro type deck. You also can copy creatures that have abilities that you can use on that same turn. Yeah, Terra, if you if you have a four mana artifact, you can you know, you you can get four mana on the same turn. Player on three, archive on four, copy it. Yeah, yeah, you can archive on four, copy it, and cash in the same turn. That is true. For some reason, I was thinking archive costs three mana to cash in. It's only two, and you get two cards. You also can copy something like. Uh, Thermo Alchemist. So if you just like Sahili on three and then on four you can copy your Thermo Alchemist that's already in play you know and cast three spells that's like you know plus six damage from your Thermo Alchemist which could which could just like end up uh, winning the game. So I think that Sahili has a lot of very subtle plays going with her. Um, and I think she's going to end up being better than most people realize, and we might end up seeing her in some week one decks that people aren't expecting. Three mana planeswalkers are always very good. Speaking of good planeswalkers, here we have Nissa Vital Force. Three green green, five loyalty, plus one. Untap target land you control until your next turn it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature with haste. It's still a land. That is until your next turn. So you can make a creature a 5-5, five, five, untaps it. Then if you don't attack, you have a 5-5 five, five blocker, which is pretty nice. Minus 3 to return a permanent from your graveyard to your hand, which means you can get other planeswalkers. Minus 6, you get an emblem 
with whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So she can ultimate the turn after you play her, which is very powerful. But what is that ultimate worth? Like you also can just like minus three to cycle through other planeswalkers that you've used, right? So like, you know, if you if you have Nissa in your deck with Liliana, like your Liliana is minusing to mill you and get back creatures. But like any lands or planeswalkers that you mill that you want to get back, Nissa can get back. Uh, you know, a five five also can close the game out fairly quickly. It's very good at pressuring opposing planeswalkers by just, you know, attacking with 5-5 Elementals with haste. The emblem is potentially game-winning, especially in matchups where the game is going to go long. Um, but yeah, I think that Nissa is very good. Hong Kong, Hong Kongo Hui, I do agree. I think she's very underrated right now. I expect to see her as a 2-of in a lot of mid-range decks. Alright, next we have the most expensive of the gear hulks and I think that the white one should be the most expensive but this one's getting a lot of hype uh, virtuous gear hulk three green green for a four four trample when it enters the battlefield distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control alright so let's go ahead and think about that for a second so four one one counters among any number of creatures you control so first off if you have no other creatures this is a 5 mana 8-8 eight, eight trample. That's real big. If you do have a bunch of creatures, then you can distribute the counters. So you, a, a common line, I think, is going to be to make this a 5-5 five, five, so that it doesn't die to like Chandra or Grasp of Darkness or Collective Defiance. And then you pump up a couple of your other creatures. So imagine that you have a Sylvan Advocate uh, that you can pump and then, you know, in a... In a, in a, in a tireless tracker or something or you, know, you have a bunch of tokens on the battlefield from a Nissa voice of Zendikar that you can put the counters on um, or you you know you, you play virtuous gear hulk its trigger goes on the stack you know what you have to target them I, I wonder if you're able to crew like if you can crew a vehicle with the trigger on the stack and then put the counters on the vehicle we'll have to ask a judge uh, but there's just so many different things that you can do with Virgilus Gearhulk. And it only costs five mana. It's very, very powerful, but I don't know if it's I don't I don't know if I'd say that I think it's better than Cataclysmic Gearhulk. It is another artifact creature, so it helps you it helps insulate you against Cataclysmic Gearhulk. Virgilus Gearhulk is very good. But again, that five mana slot is so stacked, right? Like you have Avicen, um, you have Angel of Invention if you want to um, there's just a lot of a lot of spots at that five. <laughs> this card is great though. Make sure you get yours. All right, here we have Rashmi Eternity's Craft Eternity's Crafter. So two green blue for a two three legendary creature elf druid. When you cast your first spell each turn, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a non-land card with converted mana costs less than the spells, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. If you don't cast the revealed card, put it into your hand. I think this card is just absurd. So it's four mana for a 2-3. The first spell you play each turn, you get to Cascade. And if... Yeah, if it's a land card, it just goes in your hand. If it's a non-land, that's less that you can play it. And if it's a non-land that's more, you just put it in your hand. So like, it, this card is just insane. Like it makes all of your, it makes all of your spells drawing cards, or cascading. Like, this this card is just. I, I, I'm actually surprised that nobody else is just talking about how insane this card is, because it just seems busted. Uh, Sliffer, we are just going over the mythics right now because there are still uh, some more rares, commons, and uncommons left to be spoiled. Once the rest of them um, have been spoiled, we will do a set review for the rares and then commons and uncommons. But for now, we're just going to go over the uh, the mythics. Dice to bolt, that's true. Man, so when I first... So going into this review, I'll be completely honest, I thought that if you didn't play the card, it just went on the bottom of your library. 
I didn't realize it just puts it in your hand. This card is just insane. It turns everything into a cantrip at worst. You're just like Rashmi into Nissa. Play, you know, if there's a spell on top, great. If not, I get to draw a card. I mean, what do you mean it's three toughness you have to untap it to get, like, uh, unless this thing had five toughness, like, it's going to be not the easiest thing in the world to untap with. But if you do, like, what more do you want out of a four mana card, right? Like, if you untap, you're probably going to win. Especially if you just, if you're, like, casting spells on your opponent's turn. You're just, like, play a card on my turn, play a card on your turn. This card is just insane. I also remember seeing some stuff online where Rashmi, uh, her name is an anagram for Mishra. And people are wondering if this is just like a throwback to Mishra or maybe somehow the two of them are connected. I don't know, this card seems insane. Alright, here we have Aether Works Marvel. So, four mana, legendary artifact. When a permanent you control is put into a graveyard, you get an energy counter. You can tap it, pay six energy, you get to look at the top six cards of your library. You may cast a card from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So, so far, this is the only mythic that I don't see as being a slam dunk pick in limited, but I still feel like it's going to be because there are enough commons and uncommons to just give you energy when something happens. So, like, just being able to cast Emrakul when it's the top, in the top six, or any of the other Eldrazi Titans seems sweet. Just need ways to get energy. I feel like this card has a lot of potential, and is like, it's not going to be a fair card. Like, it's either just going to be, like, an insane four of in a deck that is utilizing it, or it's just going to be bulk. What do you guys think about Aetherworks Marvel? Do you see yourself trying to cast uh, Emrakul with it, or or what? I don't think it's going to be that hard to make it work, but like, is it going to be worth all the setup? Like, if you're spending all of this stuff. With the green knot thing, and just be very dis disappointed. Lunark Mantle. Well, so like. When you sacrifice clues, when you sacrifice clues, it gives you counters, which is sweet. You also have, like, um, Evolving Wilds, which is cool. I don't know, man. I think there's enough things that give you energy that are commons. In the commons, this might actually just be a slam dunk first pick in Limited, too. Because, like, you just get energy residually, and, like, once you hit six, you just get a free card. I think this card's going to be sweet and limited. Either a four of or bad and constructed. Alright, well here we have the last mythic. Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. It's a vehicle. Five mana. Six five. Flying. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls and crew three so you can tap any number of creatures you control with total power three or more this vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn so it's a five mana artifact that when it comes into play it deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker and when it attacks it deals three damage to a creature or planeswalker and you can make it a creature by tapping any number of creatures up to three total power. 
and then it becomes a 6-5 flyer. I think this card has a lot of potential, but it's all going to determine, like it's going to come down to just how easy it is to crew. And if you're just playing a bunch of creatures in your deck, I think it's going to end up being pretty easy to crew. I don't like that you can't find it with Duskwatch Recruiter. I really like that the vehicles are immune to sorcery speed creature removal. I think this card's insane. It's only five dollars and seventy-five cents. You know, I need to win the open this weekend so that I can just pre-order all these mythics before they go up. It really just depends on how easy this guy is to crew. So like this is going to be good friends with Tireless Tracker. If you crew this bad boy and fabricate counters on it. Fabricate doesn't put counters on the creature. Fabricate puts like fabricate puts counters onto a creature with counters on it. If you make this a creature, put plus one plus one counters on it. When it becomes not a creature, it still has the plus one plus one counters that will then apply when it becomes another creature. Thanks, Sliffer, I appreciate it. Yeah, so like if you have a bunch of like bad creatures just laying around, you know, all of your uh, Thraben inspectors and whatnot can uh, help turn these guys on. I feel like this card is just has to be insane, right? Just like five mana, do three damage to something. Yeah, you can crew this with the green red, the 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 green the two mana uh, three power guy. Yeah, they're not creatures in your library, or or on the stack, or in, or anywhere else. Yeah, Terran. I mean, I also tried to negate uh, Athasa the first time I saw it. That doesn't work. You can negate these guys, though. Yeah, I think that Sky Sovereign is going to be a big slam dunk. Lupine Prototype for crew. Yeah. Get crewed. Buff them up. I think this card is, this card is just insane. Which so which mi all right, I think that Chandra is obviously the best mythic. Thalia does affect the, the vehicles old Thalia. New Thalia doesn't, which is nice. So that's not a creature. So which which mythic So I think that the mythic that has the most potential for a price increase is Noxious Gearhulk at only 575, or Sky Sovereign. God, this card just seems insane to me. Such a huge body. Those wolves are there drinking some water. I think the Planeswalker deck Nissa will be remotely playable. Uh, yeah, Nissa is going to be insane. You can. You can crew during, during attacks. How cool it is. So you're just like, in defense, your opponent's attacking you, and then all of a sudden, this flagship just comes flying down out of the, out of the clouds. Man, Sky Sovereign seems insane. Also, this is just, every single one of these... Mythics, with the exception of Aetherworks Marvel and uh, Metallurgic Summonings, are just like 1,000% slam dunk pack one pick ones. Like all of the sets uh, up to now have like had some, some, you know, one or two stinkers at Mythic and like some mediocre cards. Oh, the six man Anissa? Probably not. But like every single one of these mythics is just like insane pack one pick one. Every one. All the gear hulks, the angel, all the planeswalkers, the demon, Rashmi, Sky Sovereign. Marvel's probably actually just very good too. This limited set is going to be nice. And, and, 
there are uh, master works, masterpieces, metalworking. The masterpiece stuff is going to be pretty sweet. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing limited. This mythic review has been real fun. Um, normally on this channel on Thursdays, what we do is uh, I, I just like review user submitted decks and then we play them, tweak them, and play them some more. Uh, but I think that uh, so this week uh, I don't have a lot of time tonight, so I wanted to do something a little unique and we do a mythic review. And I think that it went pretty well, and I'd like to advertise the reviews themselves. So I think that once we have the full spoiler for Kaladesh, we're also going to do a rare review and then a common and uncommon review. I think that would be would be really fun. Um, if it opens a soul ring or a sword just went to the draft, pretty much it's gonna be or a mana crypt. Like can you imagine your opponent just mana crypting? Ugh. Just like play Angel of Invention on turn turn, turn three or whatever. News constrictors. Yeah news constrictor News, News Constrictor is going. It feels like it's going to be the uh, the best crew member. It's the MVP crew member of all time. The best best all time crew member. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to close things up here. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Really short night tonight, but I did just want to get uh, a mythic review recorded. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that miss this because normally we go live at 5.30. We went live a little early. Uh, so this will be up on the Card Hoarder YouTube channel next week. So make sure you check it out if you want to go back and see some of the earlier things that we talked about. Um, I look forward to doing the rest of the Kaladesh review once the rest of the set is spoiled. Um, and next week, uh, we're going to be doing some more like actual bruise reviews. So I think that... Uh, let me take a look at the open schedule see what we have coming up because we might we might do popper next week for the bruise review yes yeah, so we have Orlando and then next is Indy in two weeks for the standard release weekend so we won't actually have like a relevant format to review on magic online so yeah yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. Let's just do Popper. So we'll do Popper Bruise Reviews next week. Make sure you guys send in your, your deck list, uh, cbm.stream at gmail.com. Put your name um, and the deck name and the format in the subject line, and then type out your deck list in the body of the email, and we're going to go ahead and pick a Popper deck at random, and we'll review that next week on CVM's Brew Review. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out and watching. Make sure you check out Isle of Cards for your Kaladesh pre-orders. You also can get your Magic Online cards on cardhoarder.com. Uh, they are the same company, two separate arms. Uh, and make sure you check out coverage this weekend on SCG Live for the StarCityGames.com Modern Open in Orlando, where all of Team Card Hoarder is going to be there battling out. So thanks for hanging out, guys. I really appreciate it. See you next week on CVM's Brew Review.